call this meeting to order. The invocation is going to be done by Mr. Bodine. Thank you, sir. If all will rise and we'll come together in an invocation. If we can bow our heads. Heavenly Father, God of many names, we come together in this house again in hopes to bring forth all of the good that you have to be able to provide that public service. We come in a singleness of purpose to do just that. Over the last weeks, we have seen our first responders coming together in unity to provide the best to all around us, but they do that by the empowerment of this board to create those opportunities to empower them to go forth and to be able to serve this community in the best ways possible. Please bless all of those who waver forth to be able to do that, to be a forth for all those in our community who are there every single day to see us to provide those services. Please think of all those that are serving abroad, that are also in the way of, of danger, and to provide for them as they serve us as well. We thank you for all the abundance that we have in our lives, and we use those in the purpose of you. In all of our holy names we pray. Amen. of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Mr. Boss. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of former Sheriff Mr. Joe McQueen. Honored to have you in our chambers today, sir. Thank you. And his beautiful bride. Anything from the consent agenda, Mr. Zappel? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to pull items two and number five. Okay. Mr. Chair, I otherwise move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Campbell. Commissioners, good morning. Good morning to you. Um, I understand the, it's a consideration of environmental health fees schedule revision. It's a two-part question, I guess, I have for you. Uh, it's a um, dramatic cutting of our fees that we have, especially around the uh, wastewater systems, the septic systems. Um, uh, I know that our building department, like our health department, uh, is able to do the good work that they do for our entire county based on the money that they receive from some of these permit fees. Now, I recognize that a lot of this is being uh, handed down to us by the General Assembly. Um, I, could you uh, give me your thoughts on what this will mean to the ability of our health department to be able to continue to do the good work? Certainly. So uh, at the end of the day, I have no concerns of our, our department in order to continue supporting our community. What this did was this looked at four of the different permitting options for the on-site water protection and caused some adjustments to some of the uh, permitting options. So we're looking at the options where there was perhaps an engineering entity or soil specialist already involved versus us as an individual entity doing all of those works. Mm -hmm. So what we're seeing is there is a reduction in cost for the consumer, mm -hmm. especially when permitting options using uh, outside entities are more heavily involved in the on-site water protection uh, planning phase. So I, I do not ex expect there to be any negative impacts on our uh, budgetary capacity in order to continue providing services to our community and protecting mm -hmm. the health and well-being. Um, John, I, I kind of get it and you put a, you know, a very nice light on that. One of the purposes of having a, uh, you know, a third party, in this case a neutral uh, enforcement agency like we have, is to be able to take a look at uh, essentially what are consultants' opinions about the work that's going in with a project, whether it be a homeowner's or, or a, a larger industry. Uh, and what this schedule does, along with the rewrite of the uh, 
responsibilities of our local health department. It removes the ability for us to do a lot of on-site you know, inspections. So uh, other than you know taking the word taking you know, the word of the uh, the professional engineer or the uh, authorized on-site wa wastewater evaluator, mm -hmm. is that just as a, as a sidebar? Is that a certified position? Is that a licensed position? The authorized on-site wastewater evaluator. Evaluator. Uh, it is. It is. Okay. It's certified by the state. Correct. Good. But it uh, puts into their hands uh, a large part of the responsibility that we have as a community to make sure that we don't have something that, that fails or that will um, cause problems for neighbors, et cetera. The soils conditions, which is a lot of what this is around, that we have in uh, southeast North Carolina is radically different than, say, the Piedmont or certainly the western part of the state. So I don't know that one size fits all, that there, in my mind, there's a, a, a very definite need for our health department, who knows what is best for New Hanover County, which is very small and is being uh, developed very, very rapidly, mm -hmm. that we have that oversight. I think we do have a good partnership with the state as well as the third parties that are supporting these evaluation activities. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I really feel that we'll be able to continue the services that our community needs with the specifics, uh, as you allude to, the different soil qualities that we have that may affect permeability, et cetera, of these systems. So I do believe we have a good plan in place, good communication that uh, we'll be able to continue supporting our community. Now, the way I read these new rules, and uh, you do this every day, I do not, it seems to take away a lot of the control that we have as a health department and puts it in the hands of essentially the consultants, all be them professional. Do you disagree with that? I think with our interpretation, our communication with the state was a lot of this was focusing on changing the maximum fee <laughs> Yes. schedule for this um, didn't necessarily interpret it as taking away the authority or the uh, ability to protect the community for this but certainly as things evolve we'll continue to uh, play an active role in this well I, again i recognize that this is being handed down by the general assembly to us mm -hmm. but it has the potential for some serious impacts on new hanover county as we continue to develop uh, and, you know, uh, and John, I, you know, I bless you. Uh, please keep us safe and, and find uh, whatever method you can use to keep an eye on this. Uh, yes, sir. I appreciate it. Certainly will, sir. Thank you. And, and John, while you're there, for my benefit, would you please enlighten our audience and our board on just some of your credentials and what you bring to the table? Certainly, Commissioner Barfield. Thank you. So. Um, I am uh, a physician assistant, been a physician assistant for 13 years, background in emergency medicine, mm -hmm. continue to, to practice uh, a couple shifts a month to maintain my skills. That way I can best support the, the organization and the community. I'm also in the Army National Guard, active in that, been in for 12 years, deployed to uh, Afghanistan for a year, Iraq for a year, uh, done some uh, support missions in Moldova. Um, and uh, I'm currently serving as a flight surgeon with the 449 Combat Aviation Brigade in Morrisville. Somehow that didn't come out when we first hired John, and as I was uh, getting a COVID shot, he was sharing with me his military background, which I'm always uh, honored to, to honor those that serve in our military, but you know, being a flight surgeon, uh, a PA, I think you bring a certain level of business or acumen to your role as health director, number one, but appreciate the great work that you're doing. Great. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Mr. Chair, uh, John, in, in summary, I just want to be clear because I don't want the water to be muddied. Yes, you sir. have no concerns about these changes that are being that, implemented. That's correct, sir. Commissioner, we're going to continue. We're going to continue to evaluate, make sure everybody's safe. We're just going to charge a little bit less than we did previously. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. That is correct. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, number five uh, is consideration of application for funding through the National Aeronautics 
Space Administration, NASA, teams engaging affiliated museums and informal institutions, funding opportunity for the development and implementation of space science related programming and equipment for the operation of a planetarium. Uh, Kitty, are you, oh, yes, you, there you are right there. Good morning. Kitty, I just wanted to put a, a, a spotlight on this, on this fantastic opportunity that we have here and what this could mean to our community. Could you uh, flesh it out a little bit for us, please? Um, of course, so the museum is applying for a NASA grant. Mm -hmm. It's due the middle of next month. It is um, requesting in the range of $800,000 for planetarium projection equipment. And um, there will, uh, it's a very competitive grant process, but we feel really good about our application given Project Grace mm -hmm. and the planetarium as part of that project, so um, we are very hopeful. There will only be six of these grants approved in the country, mm -hmm. so just because you apply, obviously, doesn't mean you get it, but we are hopeful. Um, so um, we will learn the award notices are in March of 2024. Mm -hmm. If we are funded, we would expend the funds over a four-year period. The first year, most of the funds would be used on projection equipment. So if I hear you right, we're going to get a planetarium. I hope so. It'll be up to whatever happens today. Wow. Is there anything like that in our community? Um, no, I think there is another planetarium in Sunset Beach, mm. Ingram Planetarium, but it won't, you know, it's been there for a long time. We will have the newest, the best, and the greatest. Thank you very much. What a proud moment yep. for the museum and for New Hanover County. Thank you. Thank you. Best of luck. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Is there a uh, motion to approve? Motion to approve Second. items two and five. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Next is presentation of service awards. Opportunity to recognize some of the most outstanding public employees that you're going to find anywhere in the country, and, and I mean that literally. We're going to start out with a special recognition, and Joe, I'd like to ask you to come up. Joe Salaman, for those that don't know, Joe is our recycling and solid waste director. He's been with us for a little over 11 years and Commissioner we've got a lot going on this morning a lot to read a lot of names So they provided me with a script so that I don't mess up Joe. Would you mind standing right up here? Next to me. Wow, you're tall <laughs> So Joe if you'd give me the honor of reading a bit about your your recent award from the North Carolina Coastal Federation earlier this month Joe was recognized by the North Carolina Coastal Federation with a 2023 Pelican Award for his work to, imp to implement several environmental stewardship programs across New Hanover County. I hope that the board would agree that it's fitting to recognize and celebrate Joe's um, honor and accomplishment here. What Joe doesn't know is that in addition to recognizing this award, he's also receiving a stellar award today for community service in stewardship. That is a county award. So I'd like to give Joe a hand for both of those honors. Joe. I'd like to share a bit about the work Joe has done in establishing these programs and provide a little context on what led to him being presented with these awards. On August the 5th, New Hanover County Recycling and Solid Waste Director Joe Salaman was honored at the 2023 Taste of the Coast Celebration from the North Carolina Coastal Federation, as I noted with a Pelican Award. These awards have been given out annually for 20 years in recognition of efforts throughout the state that highlight conservation and preservation practices related to our coastal waterways. Our local oyster shell recycling program has been a significant success here in New Hanover County. As we all know, seafood 
is a major draw and a key part of our business community. Last year, last year, the solid waste team put a 10 yard dumpster in Wrightsville Beach to encourage shell recycling. If you're a football fan, you know 10 yards is a pretty large area. Additionally, Joe has overseen the creation of the Hazwaz, Haz Wagon program, which makes the disposal of materials that shouldn't go in the landfill because of their chemical composition easier for residents who don't wanna drive to the landfill. He's also been the driving force behind making sure the wastewater associated with our landfill is treated properly. Now check out this, with a reverse osmosis system before it is released. This is the only publicly owned reverse osmosis system anywhere in the state of North Carolina for treatment of wastewater. Our landfill is the most innovative in the state, and I would argue anywhere in the country. And much of that thanks and that leadership is the responsibility of Joe, it's his vision. He makes environmental stewardship a priority each day and does an outstanding job in developing and implementing new ways to ensure our natural resources are protected. He's absolutely deserving of this Pelican Award and I'm honored that he's also receiving a stellar award and that he joined us this morning to recognize you for both, Joe, an outstanding public servant, someone who is leading our county, our state, our nation in managing solid waste. Glad to recognize Mr. Joe Salaney. Congratulations, Thank Joe. You. Outstanding. And so, commissioners, we are at service awards. So I, I hope you notice we went right by retirements. We didn't allow any this month. <laughs> so we're going to recognize first this morning individuals that are reaching a significant milestone. That's five years of service to New Hanover County. When I call your name, if you would, please come up. I, I want to be the first to shake your hand and then invite you to meet with the board and have your picture taken. And so our first five-year service recognition this morning is Eric Tello from the New Hanover County Sheriff's Office. Congratulations. Congratulations, Eric. Commissioners also with a five-year service award. Caroline Dawkins from the New Hanover County Board of Elections. Congratulations, Caroline. <laughs> and commissioners, while Caroline is visiting with you, I wanna let you know she's also a graduate of the UNCW MPA program and was a county fellow who did her fellowship in human resources. Caroline, were you in the first cohort? Outstanding. <laughs> 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 
Also, with a five-year service award this morning, we're going to recognize Lester Malloy, the new Hanover County Sheriff's Office. Congratulations, sir, and thank you. Also, with a five-year service award this morning, we're recognizing Betsy Graham, our Director of Veteran Services. <laughs> Betsy, congratulations and thank you for what you do. Commissioners, also with five years of service, it's a pleasure to recognize this morning Angela Tutton, the Department of Social Services. Angela, congratulations. Thank you for what you do. and I should announce her name properly. It is Tootin, Angela Tootin. And thank you for saying that. Angela, thank you. Also, with five years of service this morning, we're going to recognize Judith Holland with the new Hanover County Sheriff's Office. Judith, congratulations. <laughs> We're going to move to the next significant milestone and recognize folks that have been with us for 10 years this month. And so we'll recognize our first 10 year recognition Anthony DeLima from Engineering. Anthony, thank you. Commissioners, also with 10 years of service this morning, we're recognizing Benita Carr from the County Attorney's Office. Benita, congratulations. Thank you for what you did. Commissioners, also with 10 years of service this morning, we're going to recognize Paul Dow, Information Technology. Paul, congratulations and thank you for what you do.
commissioners, commissioners, also with 10 years of service. This morning, we're going to recognize Annette Brown from the Board of Elections. <laughs> Annette, congratulations. Her husband is here as well, who is a veteran. A veteran, yes, ma'am, absolutely. Would you stand up? Thank you. We're going to give you a round of applause. With you. Commissioners will move forward to 15 years of service to New Hanover County being recognized this month. And the first person that we'll recognize this morning is Damon Jones from Facilities Management. Commissioners also with 15 years of service. This is somebody I've never heard of. Some guy named Kevin Kaysen from <laughs> Facilities Management. Kevin, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> Commissioners, he just has a habit of delivering projects on time and under budget. So. <laughs> Is it too premature, Kevin, to talk about a million dollar savings that I heard about? <laughs> it's more than that, so I stand corrected. <laughs> Commissioners, we're going to move forward to 25 years of service to New Hanover County, recognizing it this month. And our first with 25 years of service is Joseph Jewell, the New Hanover County. Sheriff's Office. Congratulations, Sheriff. Thank you, George. Sheriff McQueen, do you mind coming up? He'd like to have you in his picture. Commissioners also with 25 years of service. Chawana Johnson also in the New Hanover County Sheriff's Office. Congratulations and thank you for what you do. Sheriff McQueen, do you mind coming back up? Commissioners, we're, we're going to proceed to 30 years, and this is usually what we measure a complete career. So happy, though, when folks are still with us doing their best, which is better than anybody else. And so it's an honor to recognize with 30 years of service, Octavia Spicer, the Department of Social Services. Octavia. This is Sheriff McQueen's daughter.
Commissioners, those are some outstanding folks who come to work every day to work on your behalf to keep our community safe, healthy, and secure. And I think they all deserve another round of applause. So we also are going to recognize some folks that have joined the team since last we met. And so when I call your name, if you would stand up, we want to recognize you and give you a, a loud welcome. Also, and, and I say this most every month, some months I forget, but remember that this is a job by choice. People want to work here, but it's not easy to be hired into this organization. We put a priority on hiring only people that are the best and the brightest that are also committed to public service. And that's a small universe, right? And so the people that join the team have passion, they have talent, and they are absolutely the best at what they do. And so welcome to the team. Again, when I call your name, if you would stand up, we want to recognize you. So Sydney Buff, Public Health. Sydney, welcome. Lisa Fitzgerald in the fire service. Lisa, welcome to you. Chuck Gabriel, Public Health. Chuck, thank you for being here this morning. Nicholas LaCostro, Facilities Management. Nicholas, good morning to you, thank you. Juanita Montano, Port City United. Juanita, good morning, thank you. Chad Murray in our tax department. Chad, thank you, thank you for being here. Daniel Rowe, Parks and Gardens. Daniel, good morning, thank you for being here. Janelli Martinez, also in our public health department. Good morning. How are you? Daniel Shields, the Department of Social Services. Daniel, good morning. James Smith, Community Justice Services. James, good morning, and thank you for coming to work with us. And Cheyenne Vieira, Human Services. Cheyenne, good morning. Thank you for being with us. So, commissioners, those are the folks that have joined the team in the last 30 days. So honored to have them here with us. I think they deserve a round of applause too. So commissioners, please don't go anywhere. I know it's your agenda, but the next agenda would have you sitting down to only come back up. So we are gonna recognize um, awards that were presented to the county at the National Association of Counties Conference in July, and Commissioner Zappel and Tim Buckland and I had the honor of being there at uh, the banquet when the work was done by this county that is recognized across the nation, and I think that's important to note, not just North Carolina, but across the nation, as being some of the most innovative programs that are happening at the local government level. And so we have 11 this morning. Um, going to read a little bit about it and ask each person who's representing the department and the award to come forward. So Alicia, you're first, if you don't mind coming up. Alicia is um, representing Escape the Vape. And so Alicia, Alicia, if you want to stand right over there as I read a bit about the program. Health and Hu Escape the Vape. Alicia Pickett from Health and Human Services for leading the educational campaign to inform teenagers about the dangers of vaping, making health education a priority in our schools. One of 11 NACO awards recognized in 2023. Alicia, thank you to you and your team. Next, we're going to recognize the Youth Intensive Intervention Services Program, Dana Miller. Dana Miller, Program Assistant, Health and Human Services, for providing no-cost dental care to over... This is why they give me a script and I still don't follow it. Let me start over Dana, Program Assistant, Community Justice Services, for connecting at-risk youth with community service opportunities and vocational exposure, transforming the young lives of the men and women and the boys and girls in our community. Congratulations.
Dana, thank you for bearing with me there. Next is the older adult dental program, Debbie Lovett. Debbie Lovett, dental health coordinator, <laughs> health and human services for providing, now I got it, providing no cost dental care to over 400 adults, enhancing their quality of life and well-being. Dental care to over 400 adults at no cost. The Older Adult Mental Health Program. Louisa Martin, licensed clinical therapist at the Senior Resource Center for meeting a crucial community need, conducting over 900 counseling sessions to benefit more than 100 and 73 older adults in our community. Congratulations, thank you. The Building Safety Permitting Continuous Improvement, Sadia Rodriguez, Development Services Specialist, Building Safety, for streamlining the construction-related permit process, can cutting review times down from 11 days, Commissioner Zappel, you'll appreciate this, 11 days to one business day. Congratulations. <laughs> Burnout, learning, and development. Bo Dean, Senior Human Resources Analyst, Human Resources for the Thrive NHC program addressing burnout in the workplace and providing support for our dedicated public servants. Congratulations. <laughs> Sue Condondo YouTube show, Travis Corpany diversity and equity specialist, diversity and equity, through the bilingual YouTube program that focuses on local issues and helps Latinx families access vital services. Congratulations. Nature at Home Volunteer Program. Matthew Colligan, horticulture agent, the North Carolina Cooperative Extension and Arboretum for the Nature at Home Initiative that nurtures native habitats and promotes environmental stewardship. Congratulations. <laughs> The Water Quality Monitoring, Monitoring Program, Dylan McDonald, Long Range Planner, Planning and Land Use for the ongoing thermal image study that helps identify and reduce pollution sources in all of our watersheds. Congratulations. <laughs> The Wilmington Housing Authority Recovery, Vanell Walker, Assistant Social Services Director, Health and Human Services for assisting displaced families with financial aid and emergency rental assistance, providing housing support when it was needed most. Congratulations. <laughs> New Hanover County Connect. Tamika Giroux, Administrative Specialist, Diversity and Equity, for creating the NHC Connect event, fostering connections and cultural understanding among, among minority business owners in New Hanover County. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. 
commissioners, those are 11 of uh, the recognitions that you received this year. Nobody does it for the awards, I promise you that. But what I do think our team finds validating and I hope pleases the board is that others around the country recognize the work that you've charged us with doing. And so we don't do it for the awards, but it's nice to be recognized for what we do on behalf of the community. And not that anybody's counting, but this is 65 in the last 10 years. And there's not a lot of counties in the United States. Oh yeah, there's only 3,069 counties as All well. Right. One, two. Good looking group. <laughs> Congratulations and thank y'all so much. Mr. Chair, while those folks are transitioning out, I just want to say what an awesome group of employees and uh, team members we have here in New Hanover County. And certainly um, by the show of their awards, we have a stellar team. So um, another thank you. I agree. Where did everybody go? Okay, number nine. Now they're all going back to work. <laughs> Consideration of a resolution to recognize Women's Equity Day as a National Day of Celebration. Okay, I will um, read New Hanover County Board of Commissioners uh, resolution recognizing Women's Equity Day as a national day of celebration. Whereas on August 26, 1920, then Secretary of State Bainbridge Colby provided his endorsement for the ratification of the 19th Amendment of the, to the Constitution of the United States. And whereas this amendment declared the rights of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by the state or the account of sex. And whereas this measure was a significant advancement within the prolonged debate pursuit to guarantee complete citizenship for women in the United States, and whereas Congress recognized the significance of the historic amendment, first designed August 26th as Women's Equity Day in 1973. This has, this has done so on an annual basis, and whereas recognizing Women's Equality Day as a day of celebration throughout the county emphasizes the importance of women's work for democracy. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the New Hanover County Board of Commissioners recognizes Women's Equality Day, August 26th, as a national day celebrating the importance of women's suffrage to the strength and diversity of the nation's democratic institution. Adopted this 21st day of August 2023, signed by William E. Robinbork, Chair. So, um, awesome. Uh, and this, this is great that we recognize this, and I'm so excited to be the one to read this resolution. And um, I think we're going to turn it over to you. Mr. Chair, I move to approve the proclamation of resolution as read. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Ms. Thompson. Thank you so much, Chair and Vice Chair. Uh, we are so excited about this proclamation. And here this morning, just to give a few remarks, is the chair of our New Hanover County Commission for Women, Sheila Evans. Thank you, Linda. Good morning, all. Um, basically, I did have two slides that some of you may or may not have seen, but I will bring them back September 1st, 20, or 5th when we give our annual report. Mm -hmm. In a nutshell, um, we focused on workforce inequity, and basically, for every male dollar, a woman makes 78 cents on that dollar in New Hanover County. And the other nugget that um, stood out amongst those um, slides was that it will, if we continue at the rate we are, it will take 30 years for that parity mm. to catch up. So I wanted to share that workforce information. We appreciate Keep Your Collective working with us to create those slides. And again, I'll bring them back when we do our annual report. We typically, um, there are a group of many women organizations that get together on Women's Equity Day. It is on a Saturday this year, and they have a celebration of sorts, uh, kind of a resource fair, if you will, called Women's inequity day which i always thought was clever wasn't my idea but um unfortunately that event is not happening to the extent it happened in prior years 
um, one of the organizers just was ill and we just all decided to go in a different direction, so to speak. And I was happy to collaborate with the Office of Diversity and Equity and mm -hmm. Linda Thompson and bring this before you. Mm -hmm. So on behalf of the commissioners, we are the Commission for Women, so we do call ourselves commissioners. <laughs> um, I thank you for the resolution. Thanks. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. Oh, okay. And Ms. Evans, thank you for serving on that board and for, I know you asked me to come and speak and that's a great board of women there and so we're excited for what you're doing. Thank you. Next is consideration of New Hanover County Board of Education application for oh, public school public building school. capital fund and public school building repair and renovation funds. Mr. Craig. Great. Good morning. Good morning. As part of the state lottery program, the state distributes a portion of the proceeds to each county to be used by the schools on its facilities. The funds are deposited in two separate accounts. One is a capital projects fund, which is intended for building improvements. And the other fund is a repairs and maintenance fund, which is to repair uh, things that are broken. As it relates to the capital project fund, the state's total capital project fund allocation for 2023 was 100 million, with the specific county allocations being based on the number of students in each county. Mm -hmm. This resulted in New Hanover County's uh, public schools receiving approximately $1.8 million for the capital project fund. The other fund, as I noted, is the repairs and renovations fund. Uh, as it relates to this fund, the state allocated $50 million, which was divided evenly among all 100 counties, so $500,000 uh, per county. On at least an annual basis, the New Hanover County Schools determines what they believe they need to use those funds for and makes uh, completes applications. After a series of approvals, one of which is the one here today, the funds are available to be spent on the designated projects. In your materials or applications to spend 1.7 million from the capital project fund on th three projects and a proposal to spend $166,000 from the repairs and renovation fund on one project. As you'll note, the Winter Park project is in both categories. It was budgeted by the schools to be paid for partially by each of the two funds, which is permitted for a, uh, that type of project. Eddie Anderson is with us here today. Mr. Anderson is the super assistant superintendent for operations for the New Hanover County Schools and can answer any questions that you may have about the specific projects. I would like to make one statement, Mr. Chair. As great as these dollars are, there should be a whole lot more. Unfortunately, the General Assembly many years ago decided to divert lottery funds from local schools. And we are short millions and millions of dollars over the years. So again, it, as we call it the education lottery, uh, it's truly not just for education, it's also to help balance the state's budget as well. I just want to point that out. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mr. Scalise, you need anything? Yes, sir. Thanks, sir. Uh, Mr. Chair, you can take that moment. Eddie, could you come up? Eddie, how, how many years have you been working for the school system? Um, well, I started work with Wake County Schools in 1989. I've been with New Hanover County Schools since 1997. Well, I just wanted to publicly thank you for the work that you've done in, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, in keeping up with this, again, this growth and uh, keeping our school facilities uh, in tip top shape. I really appreciate it. And you've always got an eye you know, towards you know, doing the most you can and squeezing the most out of a dollar. And we all really, really appreciate that. And you've done tremendous service for this entire community. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I make a motion we approve the Northern County Board of Education's application for one million eight hundred seventy-one thousand dollars. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you, Eddie. Thank you. Opioid settlement funds, board resolution, and revised budget ordinance. 
Ms. Rigby. Good morning. Good morning. In September, you adopted a strategy to um, address mental health and substance use disorders and to help guide funding from the opioid settlement funds that you are receiving. In March, um, you heard a spending plan and you received that and you adopted that in your budget in July. And so since then, we have received additional guidance from the North Carolina Department of Justice on uh, providing a resolution for the spending of these funds. And so this is um, not a change in content of the spending plan that you have already adopted, but rather um, a, a resolution that has been provided um, based on guidance from the Department of Justice. There's also a budget ordinance, um, and Eric can speak to that. We've also received update, updated guidance from the North Carolina School of Government on the form that the spending uh, needs to be budgeted in. As a background, during the fiscal year 24 budget process, staff recommended a multi-year project ordinance that was consistent with the approved five-year uh, opioid strategy that Jennifer just discussed. Thus, the project ordinance was, uh, that was presented and approved included five years' worth of expenditures that totaled $7.3 million, which matches the board resolution that you're being asked to approve today. However, the School of Government has recently clarified a different way that the opioid settlement funds should be treated for statutory budgeting purposes. They note that with except, with, uh, except for one exception that doesn't apply here, uh, the opioid settlement funds should be budgeted each year um, and a special revenue fund is part of the annual budget and should not be structured as a multi-year project ordinance. So before you today is a budget amendment that isolates the first year of expenditures in, this, in the existing five-year plan, which totals $1,492,000. And accordingly, going forward, the opioid settlement funds will be included in the annual budgets. Mr. Chair, I just want to recognize that this is complicated stuff, keeping abreast of all of these technical requirements that are out there, making sure that the T's are crossed, the I's are dotted, but it's not complicated stuff to recognize that the abuse of opioids have wreaked havoc on any number of communities throughout our nation, and ours in particular. So I am really grateful to the work of Jennifer Rigby and the other folks in our strategic office, Eric, for staying on top of these things because we need to deploy these funds as best we can, as quickly as we can, to make sure that they make the impact that they were intended to make. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. I'd just like to add to uh, Commissioner Scalise's comments that uh, I think the, uh, I'll call it the, the brilliance of the strategy that we've put forward here allows us to uh, put forth uh, innovative ideas on how to make these changes in our community and allows us the ability to, uh, once we have a program, take a look at how effective it is and continue with that or to make changes over certainly the first five-year uh, plan and then you know, ultimately probably be extended out over an 18-year period uh, so that we don't throw all of our eggs in one basket and find out that was not the most effective way. We'll have a chance to do take a look at other communities and see what is being effective there. This is just really smart government is really what it is and I know we have the commitment, uh, I use that word with a capital C, commitment for an additional $18 million on top of this 18.1 that we're looking at today. We're going to make a dent in this problem. We won't solve it, but we sure as heck are going to do the best we possibly can. So thank you for the strategy. Mr. Chair, I make a two-part motion, one, that we adopt the opioid settlement fund expenditure resolution, and number two, that we approve an amendment to the 2024 budget to reflect fiscal year 2024 opioid expenditures as part of the annual spending ordinance. Mm -hmm. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I want to add to that, though, the, the, um, it's the city and the county mm -hmm. working together on this. And there's some of the smartest people you've ever seen in your life in that little small room. <laughs> Not me, but I get to go to those meetings. But it's incredible uh, the, the brain power that's in there. So I promise you the money will get spent well. Thank you, Jennifer. All right. <clears throat> New Hanover County Airport Authority annual update, Mr. Jeff. Whoop. Welcome, sir. Uh, thank you, commissioners, for having me here today to give you a little update on the airport. Um, I've got some slides I'll run through uh, quickly. Some of these you've seen and uh, some of them you haven't. Um, so we'll talk about the land side, air side update, air service, 
financial and our five-year capital plan. Um, so these are our active projects out there, not managed by ILM. These are projects that have come to the airport either in the business park or on the air side of the airport. Uh, you, can, you can see them here. Uh, there's 10 projects. This will generate $3.5 million annually in ground lease revenue to the airport um, as they all come on board. They're in various stages of their dual diligence periods right now. Here's some renderings of some of those projects. Uh, Hotel uh, Cape Fear Coastal Aviation, which is a new hangar project, and uh, CIL Cold Storage uh, Warehouse. Here's a hangar complex that's uh, being planned for the uh, north side of the airfield. You can see it there at the top of the screen. And also an uh, upscale car wash facility in that location as you enter the airport across from Circle K. And we have another hangar complex on the east side of the airport uh, coming to us in the next uh, 18 to 24 months. Uh, we'll provide more storage for uh, privately owned aircraft. And we've got a couple of projects inside the terminal for passengers traveling in and out. We'll have a new Duncan and Jimmy John's by the end of the year, a uh, new retail convenience center, as well as Port City Java will be joining us out there, and uh, Flying Machine Brewery. Here's some renderings of those. Uh, air service update, all aspects of the uh, operations are up uh, with the exception of military, that's slightly down. Uh, and air service passenger employments are up dramatically. Um, you can see these here. The orange line is this year, um, and the red line is last year, which was a record, which was a record year in, in itself. And this year will be a record year as well. We're one of the fastest growing airports in North Carolina, or the fastest growing airport in North Carolina. You can see that here um, in terms of seats this year. And we're one of the fastest growing airports in the country as well. On average, uh, airports across the country are up 10%. Uh, North Carolina is up 14, and uh, ILM is up 32%, so double uh, the average of North Carolina. And that has to do with our new airlines and our new service at ILM. Um, this time last year, we had about nine non-stops out of ILM. We're up to 18 now. Uh, you can see here on the map, we serve the Northeast and Florida uh, very well. Some of the inaugural flights this year, Delta to Boston, Delta to Minneapolis, Sun Country to Minneapolis, Avello to West Palm Beach, Avello to Wilmington, Delaware. Um, there's a great billboard out there, Wilmington Squared up in, uh, on 95, it's, it's pretty neat. Uh, and then Avello to Tampa, and American to Miami, which starts November 11th. In terms of economic impact, this is a study that came out in January 2023 by NCDOT. Uh, the airport has $2.5 billion economic impact on the region, uh, creates 13,550 jobs, um, and uh, that generates one, one million, uh, 113 million in local tax, in tax revenue. Um, in terms of budget, uh, for we just completed our fiscal year-end budget. Uh, operating revenues exceeded budget, and operating expenses fell below budget. And um, looking ahead, we have a $38 million budget. That's both uh, operating operating revenues are anticipated to be about $16 million, operating expenses at 14, and then um, total capital budget of about uh, $24 million. Uh, heading into this next next year. Our five-year capital plan, which is what we have been spending a lot of time on to keep up with the growth and the demand of at, that is happening in the county overall and at ILM, we have several key projects that are coming. This is the, uh, this is now underway. The area in the yellow is an expanded parking lot, 600 new parking spaces, and you can see later how the road will go around the back of that parking lot the curb front will be expanded and extended and um, additional parking and ultimately a parking deck there in the center in the pink. Um, this is about a $92 million project in total that is now started. Uh, the runway 624 overlay is a major project that's in design now. Uh, that runway is 22 years old is in, and is in need of repair. And then we have a taxiway relocation project. This has started environmental. Um, a terminal expansion. We've exceeded the capacity of the new terminal expansion and it's not uh, fully complete. So we have to start on the next phase of terminal expansion, which is there in the yellow. 
and we received a grant uh, to begin the environmental on that project. And then we'll also be starting a noise uh, compatibility impact study um, in first quarter of 24. We received a million dollar grant for this uh, from the FAA and that will begin shortly. Um, and then at the end of the five year period, uh, we'll, we'll update our airport master plan. And this is the total um, budget that we have for that. And I would like to also just add that all of this is anticipated to come from some source of either airport charges or federal uh, grants. No local tax dollars are being used for any of this project, any of these projects. Um, so it's all either state DOT funds, FA funds, or fee, you know fees charged out at the airport to pay for these projects. And last, this is our current airport marketing campaign. Uh, I love my airport, and I certainly do, and I, and I hope everybody else does too. Mm. I'm happy to answer any questions, um, but that, that concludes our update. Jeff, thank you for your report, and I appreciate you pointing out the fact that although it's a county-owned airport, most of your fees or resources come either from federal grants. I think the parking is your biggest revenue producer. Yes, sir. And then fees from the airlines as well. But yes. For the years I've been on this board, you all have never come to the county for any resources, but you always add it to our community and put us as a destination across the country as well. So I appreciate your great work. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I'd say a quick question, Jeff. On one of your slides there, I noted kind of from my position, upper right, uh, an area noted as the March lot. I don't know what that is. Right? Um, that's a new employee lot that will be going in in March. Oh, um, oh so, the March so, lot. Yeah, so okay. it's 155 <laughs> spaces. We get really technical with our naming. Uh, yeah. yeah. The okay. November lot will open November uh, 17th, and the March lot will open hopefully in March. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead, Leanne. You go ahead. I'll, I'll finish up. Mr. Chair, I also just want to recognize that it's so important. Yes, people love to have national chains at our airports, mm -hmm. but it's really critical, and I'm glad that you have prioritized putting in some of our local establishments or incoming establishments into our airport. Flying Machine Brewery, Port City Java, those are things that we're very proud of here in this community, and I think it's fantastic that they're going to be at our airport. Mm -hmm. Let's those of us who live here enjoy them on the way out, and the folks that are coming to visit with us get to see them right as they come on in. It's a wonderful thing. We're really excited to have them. And if I might, Mr. Chair, um, I have had the opportunity over the last year to serve with you guys on the Airport Authority. And I got to tell you, I've been so impressed, Jeff, by your leadership and our chairman, uh, Sproul Topps. So let's give a shout out to Sproul. You guys work so well together. And um, the folks that work at the airport on your staff are just phenomenal. I mean, their commitment to your leadership and to the airport and the citizens in New Hanover County has just really impressed me. And I'm excited for the things that are happening. Um, something else I don't know if you want to touch on um, is possibly, if it's too premature for me to mention, uh, excuse me, but the ILM Foundation that you're working on, would you mind speaking on that? Yeah, we have a meeting on it tomorrow, and uh, we'll be filing paperwork. We've been working on this quietly in the background for about a year and a half. We've raised a little bit of money, about $10,000, and we have big dreams to grow this. Uh, and what the ILM Foundation will be is to... Um, give the opportunity to school kids in New Hanover County the, uh, to learn about career paths in aviation. That's the goal of the foundation. So, you know, and we've been doing it on a small scale. We hope to make it a lot bigger. Like this summer, we had two ACE camps, aviation career education camps. Um, we had two last year. Uh, we hope to have a, a flight simulator in every school, um, you know, and just uh, be able to give out pilot's licenses to kids who otherwise couldn't afford it. So, so I love that, Jeff. And for the folks out there listening, that is another way you can get involved with your airport. We'll be doing fundraisers. We'll be looking for people to be on those boards. I'll all go through Jeff, not the county. So, uh, so but we're excited about that. Those are things that we can do in our community and our school system that we uh, uh, normally would not be able to do. So thank you for uh, working on that foundation. Thank you. And thanks to the county staff, too, because uh, the, we wouldn't have been able to do it without their help and support, too. So, we, um, Anybody that's lived here a good while and has been flying in and out of Wilmington, you know, for a long time. The airport didn't get the way it is right now just by chance. This gentleman standing up here right here is the reason that we've got all these uh, flights coming in here and the new expansion. Um, I mean, you can't even get a parking place out there now that's so busy. <laughs> but he's fixing that. But this guy is the one that makes 
keeps the wheel greased, and we appreciate it, Jeff. Thank you. Thank, thank you, and it's our airport team is, is amazing. So really started when you got here. Thank, thank you for <laughs> thank you for having me. Thank mm -hmm. you. Encino Sports Park Project Update. Carson Porter, welcome. Thank you, thank you, Chairman Rivenbark and uh, County Commissioners. Always an honor to be in front of you all, um, and thank you for all the work that you guys do. I've had a had a glimpse into your worlds over the, through this project, and I know you do a lot of work behind the scenes that um, often goes unseen. So, so appreciate that. Um, also, just to kind of clarify my role as I, as I present to you guys, um, I'm the executive director of the Wilmington Hammerheads Youth Soccer Club. We oversee about 4,000 children with our partners in the YMCA. Uh, we owned the 70 acres privately uh, of land uh, that is being developed. Uh, it is a city project. Uh, the city of Wilmington uh, very much are the, are the leaders of this. I'm, I'd like to think I'm part of that team uh, in my role now as a storyteller and making sure that we're connecting dots and, and kind of um, continuing to keep people updated of this great, great project that all of us will benefit from. It's needed in our community, uh, and I'm really, really excited about it. I'm passionate about it. And uh, so I'll just take you through a couple of slides, uh, answer questions, uh, and be on my mm -hmm. way. Um, this was this was this started at the 2016. So nothing worth doing ever, is ever easy, uh, and I remind myself of that uh, every once in a while when I need it. Um, but 2016, we approved uh, the bond uh, that allowed us to start working towards this project. Um, uh, and just as you see these images, these are, these are renderings of of what it's going to what it's going to look like. So we'll we'll be excited to have about a 4,000 square foot building that you see um, from our partners at LS3P. Uh, that, that did the uh, did the design work. Um, this is this is in its original state when we were managing managing it as a as a as a nonprofit organization. I've got some miles on the lawnmower for sure, um, but we just took care of it and we were grateful for it because uh, they were fields and they were usable. Um, but as you can see, that undeveloped portion of land uh, that I'll just move straight to provided some real opportunity, uh, and so we're going to take the existing fields. Uh, and, and, and sort of multiply them by two uh, and to make this uh, an 11 field complex. Uh, there'll be permanently lit fields, which is a, is, is a huge thing, especially um, maybe not so much in, in June and July, but certainly in November and December uh, when the sun's going down uh, uh, quickly. We'll have an artificial turf field, which also does a lot of things, including just you know helps us deal with weather and rain, um, but also helps us um, save some of those grass fields with wear and tear. Uh, so that's something that um, we'll, we'll re be really excited in. And we should also note that there's not many of them uh, in New Hanover County. So it's, it's something that uh, we're excited to, to be able to provide that. Um, for a couple of the details, just to, to make you, you guys aware of, everyone aware of, uh, it's going to be a city-owned park. Um, we are going to manage the park uh, as, a, as an organization for a fee from the city. Um, I'm confident and excited that, uh, that, that everyone will come through this park at some time. Um, it's a sports park that was, it was we, were, we used that wording for a reason um, because it's going to have multiple sports in there uh, and it's going to be a public park. So um, there will be a day when really I think all, all, all families uh, will pass through this in some in some way in our in our in our community. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. This is just a just an image uh, to, to again kind of get excited about. Um, if you're looking from a sort of a bird's eye view, what you're looking down at is the new artificial turf. And I always sort of use the term east, west, north, south. So there's the younger kids will play east, west on a big field and the, and the older kids will play north, south. So we'll have, you'll, you'll mm. see multiple goals there. So we'll have opportunities for, mm. for all these kids to play. Um, you'll see lacrosse lines on there. You'll see football lines on there. So just to, again, to sort of a nod to, to the idea that this is truly a sports complex. And then what you're looking at beyond that, and you, there are even little pieces of the skyline that you can see in, in downtown. So you're looking south. That's that undeveloped area that we're that we're building um, new fields in. So um, mm -hmm. again, the opportunity that, that we had uh, to to take a take take a piece of land that was uh, working, but also just make it a lot better uh, is where we are. Um, Couple things just to, to make sure that, that I know that you know I, I jotted down some notes. The, the idea of teamwork is really big big in this project. Um, we could 
this project is kind of closing in on about $20 million. We could spend $30 million or more out there. Uh, and so every dollar counts, and we've been really efficient uh, in, in sort of identifying wants and needs in this project, and I think it's something that we're all going to be proud of. Um, but just to, to, to make sure to acknowledge everyone, and, and specifically um, the commissioners in New Hanover County, um, you guys' work and you guys' support of this in the form of waiving tipping fees uh, and, and supporting that, that was a big deal. Uh, and just to kind of sort of make sure everyone knows, um, the county uh, was able to waive some of the some of the fees in terms of us taking and hauling dirt away from this project, um, and and that's that's not cheap. Um, it, it's a it's a significant uh, it's a significant dollar figure in the in the six figures, uh, and what what that does is everything's connected, as I've quickly learned. But the 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 the, the willingness for you all to waive that fee, the idea that we as much as we're, we're really good with what we're doing, we could do more allows us to keep that money working, if that makes sense. Uh, and so we, we are certainly really, really grateful for that. Um, the uh, timeline, I think, you know, very safely and confidently, uh, a year from now we'll, we'll, be in that, we'll be in there fully, um, and I'd like to think a little bit earlier. Uh, so I'm excited about that, and then if, I, if we got this right, and your staff has been awesome with, with me, and I also want to acknowledge um, the Parks and Rec staff of New Hanover County. This small little window where, you know, I kind of say that we as an organization of, um, of 4,000 kids, we're very much homeless right now. And uh, Tara Duckworth and Andy Johnson um, and even um, Eddie from, from the schools, Eddie, um, have been wonderful with helping us uh, find places to play because this is really the biggest challenge for us right now. Uh, we've got a good plan. Um, we're, we're, we're around the county. We're kind of disconnected as an organization, um, but it's totally worth it uh, in the name of progress. So we're excited to get, to get back there. So, but a big thank you to, to New Hanover County Parks uh, in, that, in that space. And then if I, if I got this right, I, I just got a link that I'm happy to share um, with, with everyone and anyone. Um, and this is just a, a live stream of, of the construction, just to give you guys an idea. So um, what you're looking at is the artificial turf. Uh, if you see a, a, a white Volkswagen Jetta driving around, that's usually me at, <laughs> at any hours of the day, just kind of looking at it every once in a while. Um, but it's exciting. Uh, and, um, and much needed for this county, and uh, grateful to be able to present that to you all, and uh, looking forward to sharing it with everybody and, and being proud of it for all of us. Mr. Chair. Sure. Mr. Porter, thank you very much for coming to speak to us, present about this. I think it's so important to, to emphasize what you mentioned previously about teamwork. Mm -hmm. This really is a combination of citizens, nonprofits, the city, the county, the private sector, Encino, coming together for the benefit of the children of this community. That's one of the highest and best uses of our collaborative efforts that we can possibly make. And in particular, sir, I want to recognize you. You've really been a driving force behind this. You've put a lot of sweat equity, literally, into this. And uh, your willingness to stay on this, keep working on behalf of the kids, is going to pay off dividends. I'm really excited about what this is going to represent for all the people of New Hanover County. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Carson, thanks for your presentation. Question for you. Will these fields open up opportunities for the um, Pop Warner football to play as you mentioned yes, multiple sir. sports there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And do you envision uh, future pickleball courts out there as well? <laughs> I, uh, right now we're focusing on sort of rectangular fields, I I'm guess. I'm just putting you way. on the spot for that one. <laughs> That's a plug for a Got need. You. A great need, apparently, in our community. Uh, yeah. I don't play the game, but there's so many folks that come here every budget year asking for the county to provide pickleball courts. I think our park director, Tara Duckworth, she's always inundated with phone calls and pleas and whatnot. But this will be exciting. And the fact that you know, I, I played pop water football, so to have some additional fields. When I played here, we played at Legion Stadium. Uh, that was, wasn't a big population. So all the games were held in that one location, but now with so many people here, the, the need for multiple locations and something like this would be great, I think, for youth here. So thank you for what you're doing. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chair? Yeah. Uh, Carson, thank you for the report. I uh, absolutely love this uh, live feed thing. Uh, so often we uh, approve things like a 2016 bond and it just goes on forever and we, you know, we, we're on to the next shiny, bright object here. This allows our entire community to be able to track this and see it really come to become real. 
I also understand that this is going to put us in a position of being able to host uh, some larger regional events uh, and even, you know, in this, throughout the southeast, uh, bringing in from other states. Could you uh, just comment on that? Yeah, yeah. As I probably bring it together, as C Commissioner Scalise said, I think our, the kids in our community were always really the first priority, but mm -hmm. a second priority was um, sports tourism. Uh, and so, you know, I can speak as our organization. We do two events a year, one in November um, and one in May, and you can't find a hotel room in this in this town um, during those during those events. Uh, and uh, sort of, I, I always say we we've done that in spite of maybe uh, average uh, facilities. Mm -hmm. And so here we are with an opportunity to do something uh, and, and have kind of wonderful facilities. You know, that there's there's really great opportunities. And I think um, we'll certainly be proud to hopefully have um, people coming in our town, eating in our restaurants, staying in our hotels. Uh, that That's all things that, um, that we're confident will happen in, in the next few years. Well, usually these uh, tournaments, um, you know, we've been involved with our own children and now our grandchildren as well. I was amazed at the number of people that you're talking about. We're not talking about bringing in, you know, dozens or even hundreds, thousands. Am I correct? So just to give you a, just to give you a number, we do 500 teams, uh, and there's 15 players per team, and one to two parents per player. So um, we can talk. We can start doing some multiples pretty quickly to get to get quite high. Great. Thanks very much. Yeah, my pleasure. You ought to get one of the economists to do it, UNCW. Yeah. 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 For a long time, the Lega Festival thought that they were making a $10 million impact for this Lega Festival week. And after they did the study, it was $50 million. Mm -hmm. So it would be interesting to see what y'all had. You yep. can come back and brag about it. We'll keep you posted. Thanks, Carson. <laughs> All righty. Consideration of a request to submit bicycle and pedestrian projects for NCDOT funding prioritization. Ms. Rebecca Ross. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Uh, Tara Duckworth and I are here today to request authorization to submit bicycle and pedestrian projects for North Carolina Department of Transportation funding. Funding would be allocated through the next round of the NCDOT State Transportation Improvement Program, or STIP. This 10-year schedule of projects is updated every two years, and NCDOT Division III, along with the WMPO, are able to submit bicycle and pedestrian projects for funding consideration on behalf of local jurisdictions. If any of these projects are awarded funding, NCDOT would design and manage construction as well as pay for up to 80% of the project. We're here today because the county must fund a minimum 20% match for the projects. We've been working with NCDOT staff to identify projects from the bicycle and pedestrian trail working plan put together for the quarter cent sales tax ballot initiative last year that are also in the city of Wilmington, New Hanover County Greenway plan because projects submitted for funding must be included in an adopted plan. We are requesting authorization to continue working with NCDOT to identify the most competitive projects, but we have identified four initial ideas that will, in coordination with other projects planned or constructed, greatly expand the trail network across the county. We're looking at a multi-use trail along Piner Road and Mason Borough Loop Road that would connect all the way from Monkey Junction intersection where the planned South College Road Trail will end, all the way to where the city's Mason Borough Loop Trail will end. We're considering a project to fill the gap between that South College Road Trail and the planned trail that's being constructed by NCDOT as part of the pedestrian safety project along Carolina Beach Road between Antoinette Drive and Willoughby Park. We've also identified a potential project that would then extend that trail up Carolina Beach Road to connect in with the City of Wilmington project in that area. And we're looking at extending the bicycle and pedestrian components included as part of the planned Monkey Junction intersection improvements down to Sanders Road. There is still work to be done to finalize the submittal. NCDOT is working with other jurisdictions and only has a limited number of submittals they can make and the projects we've described may need to be divided into portions 
um, for separate projects as overall cost does impact how competitive the projects are and how they'll score in prioritization. If you authorize us to continue this morning, we will continue to work to prepare for the submittal and we'll know in summer 2025 how the projects fare, but we'll have some idea as to how well the projects score this coming spring and should have time to allocate the required 20% match as part of our regular budget process. If you have any questions about the projects we've identified, Tara and I would be glad to answer those. And Michelle Howe with NCDOT is here in case you have questions regarding the NCDOT prioritization process. Anybody have any questions? Move to approve the request to develop and submit bicycle and pedestrian project for NCDOT funding prioritization. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, ladies. My job. Now we have a public hearing on August the 7th, 2023. The Board of County Commissioners adopted a resolution of the Board of Commissioners of the County of New Hanover, North Carolina, authorizing the negotiation of an installment financing contract, directing the publication of notice with respect thereto and providing for certain other related matters thereto. The board determined that it is in the best interest of the county to enter into an installment financing contract to pay the capital cost of construction of a new joint library museum facility and improvements to an existing uh, county parking deck that will serve the new facility. The board must now conduct a public hearing concerning the installment financing contract and the proposed 2023A projects of any other Transactions contemplated therein and associated therewith. Is there a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, you want to? Thank you. I don't have a lot to add to that. The purpose of the uh, agenda item today is to hold the public hearing and also to approve the approving resolution that authorizes the county staff to carry out the debt issuance. Um, Information-wise, we've presented on this several times in the past. The only thing I've got to add today is that as we planned, we did file an application with the Local Government Commission on um, August the 8th that I think Chris is going to speak to later. Thank you, sir. Okay, it's a um, so public hearing. Each speaker will be allowed three minutes to provide comments, and it's not it's just three minutes because we've got a lot of people. So first person to speak is Miss Diana Hill. Hello. Hi. Um, of course, one more time, I would like for you to reconsider this whole project. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of mistakes from the very beginning. Um, the previous commissioners, only two of you left, approved the um, multi-million dollar um, project uh, in 2017. It took you four years to get that project to the LGC. And then the money that, the money that of about a hundred thousand, a hundred million dollars is now worth over one million two hundred forty seven million dollars and now we have developers who are willing to do it for fifty five million dollars we would have saved more money if the county commissioners hadn't decided to gift the previous developers with two and a half million dollars two of the buildings and this is all about funding <laughs> two of the buildings are historic historic uh, contributing buildings by and that is the Bourse Building and the um, library. The only reason the library is not on the historic National Register is because when they, when they um, purposely, that is a word, purposely renovated the Belk Building to be a library, they moved the, the entrance to the library. And that's the only impediment for, the, for, you, to, for you now to be considering destroying two historic contributing buildings. 
is it, I, I ask you, is it really revitalization to take a blank slate that you have on the Gray Street side and move two existing venues over there, knock them down, demolish them, and then build uh, to a combination that is going to confine, especially the museum. I hope you've had time in all of my appearances to look at what has happened, what has happened in New Hanover County. This, we're the second smallest county in this state out of 100, and we have more history here. We have all of the history of the, everything east of the Mississippi, plus the first European to discover the Atlantic Ocean, made landfall here. And of course, we have the, if you will, successful, the only successful coup d'etat, plus lots of other things. And for to think that you would consider confining the museum when we've got, as you just all said, thousands of people coming here for tournaments, for events, for conventions. Is my three minutes up? Okay, I think you get the picture. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michelle. Next is Brad Hunter. Good morning, commissioners. I'm Brad Hunter with Coal Banker Seacoast Advantage. I'm the vice president and director of our new homes division. Um, I can attest to the critical role our downtown plays in attracting people and businesses to our region. When meeting people in my capacity as builders and developers who are considering a move to our region, culture and quality of life is always a top consideration in their decision-making process, and we take pride in showing them all that our downtown has to offer. Whether it be the Live Oak Amphitheater and the Wilson Center or Athelian Hall, world-class restaurants and businesses, our city center is alive and thriving. This is a huge differentiator in attracting businesses to our future citizens to our region. This has not always been the case. For many years, downtown struggled, but fortunately, thanks to a lot of work and the foresight of our city leaders past and present, we have seen tremendous progress and revitalization efforts over the last 20 years. It would be foolish to grow complacent and not continue to build on that momentum as we would be short-sighted if New Hanover County didn't take advantage of the opportunity to redevelop this underutilized block, which is not only dated, but an eyesore. Of equal importance, Project Gray serves as a critical need for New Hanover County, that being a modern library and a Cape Fear Museum. This community asset will serve citizens for decades to come and will be an educational and cultural asset for our community, especially our youth. On behalf of our 900 agents team members at Coal Banker, we thank you for your persistence and your vision to bringing Project Grace to a reality, and we can't wait to see it built. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next is Ms. Natalie English from the Wilmington Chamber. Good morning, Chair Rivenbart, Vice Chair Pierce, Commissioner Sparfield, Scalise, and Zappel. I am Natalie English. Um, I'm a citizen of New Hanover County, and also I get the honor of serving as the President and CEO of the Wilmington Chamber of Commerce. Today I come to thank you for your leadership and investing in our community in ways that keep us moving forward. Project Grace is one example of a redevelopment that will contribute to our community for decades to come. The Chamber adopts a policy agenda every year. One item that is consistently on our agenda is to advocate for opportunities supporting transformational redevelopment, including public-private partnerships, which create a quality of place and offer a choice for places to live. To that end, I come today to advocate in favor of the county issuing the debt to move forward with Project Grace Public-Private Partnership. 
I also urge the Local Government Commission to put this on their agenda on September 12th and to vote to pass it. This particular public-private public partnership is a true example of placemaking. Placemaking inspires people to collectively reimagine and reinvent public spaces as the heart of their community. Placemaking is proven uh, to result in economic growth as well as the attraction and retention of workforce age people. County staff and representatives of the private sector have collectively done just that with Project Grace. Strengthening the connection between people and the places they share will shape our community in order to maximize shared value. More than just promoting better urban design, placemaking facilitates creative patterns of use, paying particular attention to the physical, cultural, and social identities that define a place and support its ongoing ev evolution. Additionally, Project Grace's proximity to citizens in the downtown area presents an access opportunity to state-of-the-art facilities for those citizens. The children growing up in downtown deserve to have just as nice a place to read, learn, play, and dream as the children in Pine Valley or Landfall. The new library facility in Project Grace will bring that to citizens around downtown. Project Grace will provide a catalyst for continued investment in the citizens and the property they own in the downtown area. We must endeavor to remember and honor our past while also moving boldly forward in pursuit of a better downtown for everyone. Project Grace will bring greater attention to our Cape Fear Museum toward this end. I conclude my statement in support of Project Grace by again publicly urging the Local Government Commission to put this on their agenda for the September 12th meeting and voting to pass it. Thank you. Thank you. You didn't even say anything about a bridge. <laughs> uh, Christina Haley. Hello. Good morning, Commissioners. As Vice President of Wilmington Downtown Incorporated, I'm here to express our unwavering support behind the financing for Project Grace, an opportunity that comes without tax increase. We additionally urge the LGC to see this on their agenda in September. I believe Project Grace embodies our county's spirit and echoes the dedication and perseverance of your staff to see this day come before us. This one project holds immense potential to change the fabric of downtown and revitalize this one block. When I think of Project Grace and this resolution before you today, it fills me with even more hope for my son's future in this region, in addition to the future of the community I serve. One of my son's favorite exhibits is the fire exhibit. He dreams of becoming a firefighter one day. I tell this to you um, to offer you a glimpse of the weight your decision carries today. If you can envision the joy and wonder of families at the Kafir Museum or at the main public library and its books and archives, you can see how great of an impact a unanimous decision today can have on the citizens you serve. It's more than building a state-of-the-art civics facility. By merging our public treasures into Project Grace, this facility can expand on these treasures, transforming the learning opportunities this region has to offer and chances for individual growth. This will be a space that I feel will bond our sense of community greater than ever before. Yes, it's an investment that will progress our local economy and attract future investment, jobs, and foot traffic that will drive downtown's growth. I recognize this one project will promote commerce benefit business, and downtown's foundation. But again, at its roots, Project Grace is a hub for lasting community connection for residents and visitors alike. In this one block's transformation, you sow the seeds for future generations. Commissioners, I wanna leave you with this final reflection. Last Saturday, I witnessed 18 families downtown while out for brunch. Among them were infants, children on bicycles, toddlers and strollers, and youngsters walking hand in hand with their loved ones. It's evident that we need more family offerings downtown. This project is the solution we need. This is the site where we need it. I wholeheartedly support this opportunity and hope you seize it by adopting this approving resolution today. In closing, I wanna thank you and your staff for your commitment to thoughtful growth, nurturing community inclusivity, and for carefully considering such a well-calculated investment 
in addition to including phenomenal private partners in Cape Fear Development, LS3P, and Monteith Construction to ensure a lasting development. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Andrew Cook. Good morning, commissioners, and thank you so much for giving us this time. Uh, my name is Andrew Cook. I'm a lifelong New Hanover County resident. Jonathan, I played Pop Warner football at Legion Stadium as well. Um, but I uh, wanted to say I'm here, uh, business development director of McKinley Building Corporation, as well as the vice chairman of Willington Downtown Incorporated. I come here today to strongly endorse and lend my support for Project Grace. This project ties directly to Wilmington Downtown's mission of providing economic opportunity and revitalization of the Central Business District. It also provides world-class facilities and a museum and library to our Central Business District, which is very, very important. And I uh, just thank you all for pushing forward and revitalizing this project. And it is very much needed for our community. And uh, we as a business community and as a board of Wilmington Downtown will fight to make sure that this is on the agenda on September 12th of the LGC. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Tommy Taylor. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, I'm uh, here just to uh, lend my support. I'm with the United Way of the Cape Fear area, and we are a local nonprofit located downtown on Second and Grace. And uh, we strongly believe in this effort and appreciate and thank the, the commissioners for their tenacity and for their vision for this project. And we're very excited about what this means to downtown families and the educational and cultural opportunities that uh, children will have access to that they may not have otherwise. So thank you and you have our full support and I very much would like to see it on the LGC agenda as well. Thank you, sir. Um, Ed Alban. My name's Ed Ablard. I'm an attorney. I've practiced law more than 50 years, um, and I have one of the newest licenses in uh, North Carolina because I passed the bar after uh, some time engaged therein. Um, I moved here in 2012 from north of uh, the uh, old town of Alexandria, so I know about old places, and we bought a house in the old place here in uh, uh, Wilmington, and uh, my wife and I are above 82 years old. My wife's going to be 82, and I'm above 80. Um, and I got to tell you that uh, I'm here because my neighbor, Diana Hill, uh, is in the right on this thing. You are diminishing the intellectual assets of this county. Um, and I think you should know that the law library, the public law library, has been shrunk. Um, the uh, substitute which is suggested is that uh, it all is on computers, which is absolutely true, except that there's a paywall barrier. And the, uh, for the public, the paywall is uh, available uh, in terms of a, uh, right now, a set aside space for a law library on the main floor of the uh, existing building, but there's no plan in the uh, current plan for a set-aside space where a door can be shut and private conference can be held between uh, people who are examining what's on the computer or what's on the shelves. So I've got to tell you that um, Ms. Uh, Hill is in the right. The uh, situation for lawyers here in uh, New Hanover County is not good. Uh, your, uh, a lot of your services are going to lawyers in, uh, in Raleigh and in Charlotte. 
Uh, a lot of the dollars are going up there and being counted in their economic database and not here. Uh, the uh, labor statistics show that the lawyers here in town uh, earn approximately one half of what those lawyers uh, do up there in uh, that ring of cities uh, north of here. So uh, this step here is a is a step back. The intellectual assets are being diminished as we speak. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Gustavo Rodeo, did I get you? Was I close? Radio. Radio. Buenos dias, commissioners. My name is Gustavo Rodea. I own Mattress and Furniture Liquidators. As the owner of Mattress and Furniture Liquidators, I can attest the critical role on our downtown place in attracting people and their business to a region. When we meet people who have moved to the area, culture and quality of life is always a conversation, especially the ones that move from big cities like LA and New York. I enjoy telling them, telling them all about a downtown has to offer, whether that be the Wilson Center, the Italian Hall, on the world class restaurants, especially the Mexicans, <laughs> on our community center is alive. It's thriving. This is a huge differentiator in keep future citizens in our re region, especially our more millennials move to, to our county. It will be foolish to grow complacence and not to continue to view the momentum, and it will be short sighted if New Hanover County didn't take advantage of the opportunity to redevelop this indirect in, block which is not only dated, but eyeshore. For equal importance, Project Grace serves as a critical need for New Hanover County, having a modern library and a K-Fair museum. This community asset will serve all citizens for many decades to come, and it will be an educational and cultural asset to our community, especially our youth. On behalf of the Latin American citizens in New Hanover County, we thank you for your persistence and your vision of bringing this Project Grace to reality, and we can wait to see it built. Gracias. Thank you, sir. And that's all the folks that had signed up to speak. So at this point, is there a motion to close the public hearing? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, Mr. Yes, sir, commissioners. Um, to, to help with the, the discourse of the board since the, the public hearing is closed, sharing something with you at the meeting that we were able to communicate to you on Friday. Um, our CFO, two of our assistant managers, and I had a meeting with staff from the local government commission, and, and their point was twofold. One, to inform the county that it had submitted a complete and thorough application before the deadline and would be evaluated in time for a recommendation of approval or not of issuing debt likely before the September the 12th meeting. The other point of the call, which I think was more important, was for them to instruct us per the state treasurer that your debt item will not be heard on September the 12th um, for, for one of two reasons. Number one, the treasurer does not like the site and number two, if this project were to proceed, debt is not necessary in that you have a large cash balance of revenues available. Um, at, I, I asked the staff to, to validate that at least three different times and they had every opportunity to say that I had misunderstood what the instructions were, but I believe Eric, Lisa, and Jessica will affirm that, that what I'm sharing with you is correct. You, your item will not be calendared for September the 12th um, because the treasurer does not like the site and believes that debt is not necessary. Um, we also were told that we would not be invited to make a presentation to the commission um, on September the 12th to outline the deal parameters, which has happened previously with your application for the prior model. Uh, we have prepared commissioners for your consideration a letter addressed to the treasurer, number one, asking 
for him to change his position, you have submitted a complete and thorough application. The staff will have evaluated it and will have a recommendation in time for September the 12th. We would like him to agree to calendar it for consideration, not asking for him to vote for it, asking for him to calendar it because you've met the statutory framework. Mm -hmm. If he's not willing to calendar the item, in the letter we are asking for you to ask the local government commission as a body on September the 12th by vote of the commission to calendar it for consideration that day. That is something that we believe the commission has the, the authority to do, particularly in light of the fact that the analysis will be done. The staff affirmed that they usually publish the agenda two or three days before the meeting, so it's likely it will be the Thursday or Friday before the September the 12th meeting, and their point was to let us know your dead item would not be on the agenda per the state treasurer. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Mr. Coudre, uh, perhaps Mr. Smith, I just want to clarify that the traditional role of the Local Government Commission as defined by North Carolina statute is to determine whether or not a city, a county, a municipality has the capacity to take on debt and pay back that debt. Is that a correct baseline assertion of what the LTC does? Yes, sir. So whenever we trend into the territory of disliking a site, whenever we trend into the territory of directing a municipality, a county, a city to use its cash reserves rather than take on debt. That's not something that's spe specifically enumerated. Mr. Smith, perhaps you are the better person to pose this to within the confines of the LC LGC's charge under NC statutes. Commissioner Scalise, uh, the, the statutory framework, one of the factors they look at in approving debt is whether the debt is necessary or expedient. So it is an or, um, they don't have to find it. Both of those are applicable, just necessary or expedient. And I want to further explore this. Uh, Mr. Manager, and if there's someone else that needs to speak to this, please. Isn't it traditionally the case for many businesses and individuals that rather than spend liquid cash that they have on reserve, if money can be had for cheaper in the debt service marketplace, businesses, people will go to the debt service rather than spend their liquid cash? Yes, sir. And, and particularly in the context of the county government, we, we look to use cash for one-time capital and capital outlay investments that have a rather short, dur short duration. So we're not financing necessarily um, for, for vehicles and things such as that. The county has historically issued debt for major capital projects, for facilities and things such as that for the very reasons that you have noted. It, it is a better business decision in our mind to preserve our liquidity in times of unexpected crisis. I've used Hurricane Florence in 2018 as an example many times where the county put out more than $32 million of cash, which had to come out of its fund balance. So we clearly drained down fund balance beyond even the 18% the minimum of your policy and took more than 24 months, probably closer to 36 months, to earn back all of those revenues from the federal government. We have had times when the, the recession was here that sales tax were not captured at the rate expected, and um, fund balance was available to offset those short revenues so that we did not have to make substantive change to service in the middle of a budget year. And so, your fund balance, and I believe the treasurer most specifically is probably referring to your revenue stabilization fund, both of those were created for specific purposes, and they are to help this county navigate uh, unanticipated crisis, whether it's economic or otherwise. And so our position to you has been that debt is the preferred, more expedient route in this regard. Um, with your revenue stabilization fund, the intention when the board created that was certainly to avoid 
disruption to local revenues in the state of crisis, but it was also to grow the corpus of that $300 million to be more so that interest earnings on an annual basis could be used to fund perhaps going concerns of the county government, therefore setting a lower tax rate if, in fact, that was the will of the county commission. Additionally, Mr. Manager, isn't it true because of the nature of our financial position that we are able to borrow money at a preferred rate, perhaps a better rate than many other places in the United States, even in North Carolina, because of how well we handle our finances? Yes, sir. The, the county has the luxury of being AAA rated from both Moody's and Standard and Poor. The last debt issuance that the local government commission, and I should note there was a no vote on that um, from the state treasurer, but that debt was approved by the local government commission. We expected to issue the debt somewhere in the marketplace north of 4% because of the competitiveness of our rates, we ended up seeing a sale on that $24 million of something less than 4% in the market space that you see. So just to confirm for the public, because I think this is really important, we have deeply considered as a policy matter that because of our preferred ability to obtain debt at a very good rate, it is more sensible for us to pursue financing this project in that means than going in to the cash reserves that we have available in our revenue stabilization. Yes, sir. You will issue debt at a rate that is lower than the interest earnings that you are enjoying currently off your revenue stabilization fund, your other fund balance as well. And that is a policy decision that this board has made, and this board has, well, perhaps not made it in exactly the same way, but has consistently advocated toward since the beginning of this project. Yes, sir. All right. I just think that that's important to recognize that uh, New Hanover County commissioners vote on policy matters for New Hanover County. We have been uniform in our pursuit of this project since 2017, regardless of any number of factors. Mm -hmm. uh, politics shouldn't get in the way, but politics have not gotten in the way on this. Everyone, regardless of their political persuasion, who sat up on this dais has voted in favor of this project. And uh, I sure hope that if this matter is not calendared on September 12th, that the other eight members of the LGC Commission, and there are nine members, one of those folks or two of those folks will take the initiative to put it on. It really needs to be heard. I appreciate all these opportunities to have these public hearings. I uh, want to be transparent with the public at all times, but the public wants this. The Commission wants this. There's a mechanism by which it can be approved. It needs to be approved. It's time to stop talking, and it's time to start acting. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Uh, um, the county manager, you brought up as one of the two points that uh, Chairman Falwell has against this, this site. Did he offer his opinion as to where he thought was a better site? Before the, we even get, we answer that, is it anywhere in his purview to tell us where we should site a project? Commissioner Zappel, I, I don't believe it, it's within the, the boundaries of what the commission should be considering, but he has certainly expressed his displeasure with this site. The, the specific reference are the first two floors of what is now the city-owned building that was formerly Thermo Fisher. Has the city expressed any desire to have a museum, a county museum and library in the building that they just bought? Certainly the, the city manager and, I've, and I have had those discussions and both agree it is not the right location for a museum and a library. As well as the fact we don't own that building. No, we sir, we do not. We do own the land where we are, so there would be yes, not only major upfit, if indeed it structurally could happen, as, and there will be a lease of some sort. Yes, sir. There. So that, that doesn't make any sense. I also agree with Commissioner Scalise's uh, point of view about the funding of this. Uh, it just feels like the chairman, uh, Mr. Falwell, is layering in his own opinion on something that is not part of his job here and has thrown, 
I, I just find it amazing that it's outside of his purview uh, on the, these two items that he will not come off of, despite the efforts of our staff, yourself, to explain to him ad nauseum why this project should move forward and the viability of it. Who, what in his, in his mind thinks that we should uh, pick up this project that has been in formation now for six years and put it into the old PPD building? It's not his job. Thank you. I know that's more of just a comment than a question. You got something else? <laughs> Well, I appreciate all the great work that has gone into this over the last five, six years. Um, you know, as I look at uh, Mr. Falwell's comments, to me it's all about the sale of the hospital. Mm -hmm. And I think his retaliation for the county selling the hospital and now wanting to direct us to use those resources, but he appears to be an intelligent man. And he's also the state treasurer, so I would think that it's with his great mind and intelligence he would understand that the money that we're receiving interest-wise on the $350 million we have invested will bring a greater return than the interest that we'll pay on any loan that we would get. And it would make not make good common sense for us to spend more in interest than we're gonna receive uh, with us protecting the corpus of the $350 million that, that's invested there. The fact that he is trying to unilaterally usurp uh, the commission's authority to uh, let this be heard behooves me. And I'm hoping that again, that some of those uh, members of the LGC that are in favor of this project will indeed put it on their agenda. And I hope that we'll have staff and hopefully some commissioners will be there as well uh, in the event that that happens that we can get up and speak to this. Uh, he cited before that the business community was not in favor of, and we've heard from many folks in our business community that they are indeed uh, delighted and truly 100% behind this project. Uh, to me, it's going to be transformative for downtown Wilmington. We have seen a great transformation take place in the look and feel of downtown Wilmington, but this right here will, I think, enhance educational opportunities for not only the folks that live here, but also, also those that come and visit here. Mm -hmm. uh, look, relocating in the PPD building uh, is far away from the central downtown business area, <laughs> far off the path of those that are visiting here that, that they would normally take to see a library. You know, when you go downtown Raleigh, you see the Museum of History and Science and, and those state museums that attract a lot of attention, a lot of visitors. And so I'm hoping again that uh, through our efforts here uh, that we'll get this on the agenda. My next question is that in the event that this doesn't, is there a mechanism where counties or cities have indeed sued the state in the past to allow their projects to move forward? Because to me, if, 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 if he's the roadblock, and we are one of uh, a handful of counties in the country that has two AAA bond ratings, I would think we would have good standing in case to um, take us to, to the next level. Your thoughts, Jordan or, or Chris? Commissioner Barfield, I'm unaware of any history of a local government suing the LGC to get an item on the agenda. Um, I'm not saying that's not an option, but I, I don't think it's been done before in the history. I would say um, certainly um, a better and quicker option to get on the agenda would be to have a member um, move and a member second and a majority vote to place it on the September agenda. It would be um, a more efficient and effective mechanism, but legal action could be a possibility, but haven't fully explored that. I think, I'd just like to say this, I didn't know what the LGC was, what it meant. When I got on the board and y'all kept talking about it, so I looked it up, and it was formed um, 90 years ago, something like that. Ash, the city of Asheville went bankrupt, and they had to go in and straighten them out, and that's when it was formed. And it was formed for a good reason, to keep cities from getting in trouble. And, and I would I dare to say that we're probably as far away from getting in trouble is uh, any city in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a personal vendetta for this gentleman, and um, we're gonna do the best we can. You got anything to say? Mm -hmm. um, 
just that, you know, the LGC was certainly created for a very worthy uh, cause, and, and I applaud the, the members for uh, it's from doing that. Uh, they certainly keep a lot of communities from getting in trouble, but um, the purpose is to hear if, if, if we've submitted our application, I know we have in a timely fashion, it should be calendar and heard, and then look at the facts and look at the numbers and make your decision, and I just ask that we follow the proper procedure in that. Okay. When we closed the public hearing, I didn't finish. We need to um, make a motion approving an installment financing contract and delivery thereof and providing for certain other related matters. So moved. I second the adoption of the resolution. All in favor? Aye. 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 All righty. All righty, committee appointments. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, before we move into that, I want to say thank you to the uh, members of our business community uh, and our community partners who took the time out of their day to come down here in a, on a morning to speak in favor of this. Thank you very much uh, for your support. Okay, first committee is New Hanover County Board of Examiners and mm -hmm. Electricians. Mr. Chair, I'd like to nominate Russell Carlson and renominate, uh, reappoint Charles Harrell. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 New Hanover County Board of Mechanical Examiners. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to nominate Donald Lewis and reappoint Devin Skipper. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. New Hanover County City of Wilmington Workforce Housing Advisory Committee. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to nominate Sean Brantley, Tom Gale to be reappointed, and Erica Barnett as the nonprofit housing community. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Okay. New Hanover County Library Advisory Board. Mr. Chair, I would like to move to reappoint Scott Dodd. Mm -hmm. Appoint Ann Clinton, I'm sorry, Tammy Hearing to fill out the unexpired term expiring 83124. And for the remaining three positions, Ann Clinton, Aaron Kogan, Scott Dodd. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Did I get everyone? Was there a. We're missing Harriet one. Smith. Yeah. I apologize. Re amend my motion to include Harriet Smith. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. New Hanover County Non County Agency Funding Committee. Mm. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I no, uh, nominate or for reappointment Shane Hartley. All in motion? Second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And last but not least, Park Conservancy of New Hanover County and Board of Directors. Mr. Chair, Naveen Ritchie. Mm -hmm. This one? I'll second that. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Yeah. We have uh, for speaker Bonnie Murray. While Ms. Murray comes up, I uh, just want to let the public know that she was one of my middle school teachers at Willison Junior High School. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be so here without hard. you. <laughs> Ms. So Murray, you have yeah. <laughs> three minutes. Okay, I'm okay. going to, yes. Well, first, let me say good morning to each of you, and thank you for the opportunity to come and present our concerns to you. Um, as he stated, my name is Bonnie Murray, and I'm here along with some of the uh, residents of Scotts Hill, the old Scotts Hill and Kirkland area, which specifically uh, refers to Stevens Church Road, mm -hmm. McIntyre Trail, Creekwood Road, and Foy's Trail. 
The residents are mostly elderly, retired, with low income and disabilities. This morning, we would like to present to you our ongoing concerns in our neighborhood regarding the lack of clean water. Presently, our residents utilize well water, most of which has been tested to contain the PFAS that are known to be present in this area, sulfur, which gives our water the rotten egg smell, lime, bacteria, lead, copper, nitrates, and of course, iron. With that iron, we have the presence of rest, rust that shows up in our water. And that rust negatively impacts everything that it touches, and it even clogs our wells. Research has proven that these contaminants contribute to cancer and other health issues, of which many of our residents have been diagnosed with. Other illnesses include diabetes, heart and kidney disease, autoimmune disorder, and of course, child development issues, just to name a few. We are also faced with additional financial burdens. We have to, we have to purchase and maintain water softener machines and systems which typically has a lifespan of five to eight years. We purchase continuously salt close to, to go in that, in that system. Um, we have to purchase water pumps on a regular basis. Additionally, we have to replace our appliances because of the rust deteriorating them. And of course, we have to pay all the time for licensed plumbers. Because of these conditions, we are soliciting your help in obtaining grants to assist our community to acquire clean water. So in my closing, as a community, we are willing to be assistance to you in helping us to make the reality of clean water possible. Thank you for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your support, and thank you for your consideration. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. They also spoke at our last CFP way meeting, and as we know, we have a few pocket communities in our county that are experiencing this same challenge with number one PFAS, uh, but also contaminated wells and the like. And uh, as we did with Heritage Park and Market Hill, it'd be great if we could find some resources, some grant dollars to help these communities. Uh, we've heard from folks in Walnut Hills, and we have, as I mentioned, these pockets where there's water and sewer all around these communities, and it's all been developer-driven in terms of the water and sewer that are and paid for. But we have neighborhoods that are surrounded with no access. As we know, CFPOA is not in the business of extending new water and sewer service. Um, they don't want to burden the ratepayers with that challenge, and it's up to the local government, through the city or the county, uh, to find resources, whether federally or statewide, that could help run water and sewer. You know, my goal for our county is that eventually we have a county that's fully maintained by Cape Fear Public Utility Authority water and sewer. It, it amazes me that when you go to Figure Eight Islands, with all the million dollar plus homes there, they're on septic systems. Mm -hmm. Imagine if uh, a major hurricane were to come and, and disrupt what's there and what would happen to the ocean and the tourism industry that we have here based on that one uh, element of septic systems being placed there. I know with Heritage Park and Market Hills, uh, we engaged because we had a number of failing septic systems that were actually 
uh, putting those pollutants into streams and going to our, our river as well, and we saw it as a public health concern. Uh, but this too is also a public health concern. When you you would have seen the water bottle that these folks brought in. Uh, there would be no way that anyone would want to drink the water that they have coming in. So you got to go out and get bottled water, or have some mechanism of cleaning it to make it potable. So again, I'm hoping that we can find a way to partner with their community, with Cape Fear Public Utility Authority, and the other communities that would come before us already, um, and, and help alleviate this crisis. And hopefully, some of the resources from uh, Comores and and DuPont can come to bear with this lawsuit that CFUA has put forward to help with some of these costs. Uh, but we hear you. Mr. Chair. I should have uh, anyone that wants to speak. Of course. Oh, no, you, oh, okay, thank you. I, I think the, the good news or the small light at the end of this tunnel in, in reference to Commissioner Barfield's comments is that the uh, county in this past budget cycle uh, committed five hundred thousand uh, dollars to the study that will get us the first step towards exactly what he's talking about uh, being able to find what the priority areas are where we're having the most problems like in Scotts Hill you know or uh, in Rock Hill where we've also uh, had a number of people come to the CFUA about this but the first step is to identify those areas and those communities uh, and how, how far they are from existing water and sewer lines so that we have a, a number, essentially, to be able to go to the federal government, the state government, and we have a plan uh, that we can uh, utilize to get every member of our community uh, clean water uh, and acceptable sewer so we get them off septic systems. So I. I know in government things move slowly, but indeed in this particular case, we have taken the first steps to already make that happen, and it can't happen fast enough, in my opinion. Um, just a comment to that. I echo both of um, our commissioners' comments. And ma'am, thank you for coming and waiting through this whole meeting to say that. That mm -hmm. is so important to us. And I grew up in Pender County on well water, so I certainly understand where you're going with that. Um, so um, I would encourage us as a county to extend our, um, our, our clean water out to all the folks in this county. So thank you so much. Um, I did have another comment, Chair. Um, um, I wanted to let the board know that um, one of my um, fellow colleagues and long-term councilman and long-term representative to the um, Ports and Waterway Commission, Steve Shuttleworth, was appointed to our North Carolina um, Coastal Resource mm. Commission by General Assembly. So I'm um, very excited for um, him to continue to serve. I think his knowledge of our building code and our sensitive um, beach issues and beach renourishment and the coastal community here in New Hanover County will uh, serve the CRC well. So uh, congratulations to Steve. Mr. Chair, are we in final comment period? Yeah, it was really quick. Okay, I'll, I'll promise I'll be very quick. Okay. We had a scary situation here in New Hanover County on Friday. Uh, I know that it gripped a lot of the community. There was uh, a bad actor who uh, attempted to cause some real chaos and in some ways did cause some real chaos in this community. But we have a phenomenal sheriff's department. We have a phenomenal district attorney's office. We have a phenomenal 911 system. They worked in combination with the Wilmington Police Department, with the Wrightsville Beach Police to keep this community safe. We cannot say thank you enough to the members of law enforcement that are in this community that put their literal lives on the line each and every day to make sure that those bad actors out there don't get to rampage on this community. I thank them for their service. Mm -hmm. I'll thank them every time for their service. And I want you all to know that in no way will I ever tolerate somebody talking about defunding law enforcement. We're going to fund law enforcement in New Hanover County so long as I ever have anything to say about it. Thank you, sir. Okay. Mr. Smith. We're done.